Hello everybody, my name is Tommy and welcome to Aero Workshop. In this video I am going to continue the series on the build of my Oosnest Workbee Z1 Plus CNC. Now I have created a playlist that I will leave a link in the description of this video. So if you're coming in a little bit late into the build series, you can always click on that and it'll bring you to the full playlist of all the videos. Now, I would again like to state at this stage that this machine was gifted to me by Usenest to use on the channel. However, I am not getting paid to make any of these build videos. I will leave a link to the Usenest website in the description of this video. Now, that is an affiliate link, so if you actually use that link to get to the Usenest website, you make a purchase. I do get a small commission that'll help me to grow this channel. So the first step of building this machine is actually doing the mechanical assembly. Now Oosnest in their instructions have this set out into seven sections or categories and we will be starting out first with number one which is the wheel assembly. Okay now the wheel assembly is pretty basic. You have four components, you have two bearings, you have one precision shim and then you have the solid wheel outer. Now the idea is that you put a bearing in from either side and you put the precision shim in the middle of both of those. Now you can push those in with your fingers but it is a bit of a tight fit and also you need to try and line up the precision shim in the hole of the centre of both of the bearings. So what I've done is I have got a scrap piece of wood. I have just bored a hole for an M5 bolt, a spare bolt that I have here. And what I got to do is you pop on a bearing, pop on the solid wheel, pop on the precision shim, and then pop on the top bearing. And the bolt lines all those up together and then all I need to do is get another piece of wood with a 6 mil hole bored in it and just push the wheel together. And that's one completed wheel without having to put extra pressure on your fingers trying to push the bearings into place. And hopefully you can see that the precision shim is seated perfectly in line with the holes in both bearings. So, I have 29 more of those to put together, so I'll crack on and do that now. And there you have it, 30 assembled wheels. Okay, with the wheels now assembled, we move on to step two, and that is the Y-plate assembly. Okay, here I have the various components required to build the Y-plate assembly. So I have the two outer Y-plates and the two inner Y-plates. I then have uh, some aluminium spacer 6mm, aluminium spacer 9mm, eccentric spacer 6 mil, some nut blocks, then I have some 5 mil nylock nuts, some 16 mil, 25 mil and 60 mil M5 button head bolts. I have the drag chain mount and I have the little spanner that comes in the kit for adjusting the eccentric spacers. Okay, so the first step in assembly is to attach some nut blocks to the outer Y plates. Now this is simple enough, there is four elongated holes in each plate and that's where the nut blocks go. And it's only a case of putting the bolt through and slide on the lock.
Now, I am tightening these fully, and then I am going to loosen them back by a turn, because you're to allow these to be loose, so when you put the lead screw through, they have move, to move, so you can adjust them to the lead screw. So, I'm going to go ahead, I'm going to put the other one on the other side, and then I'm going to do the very same on the other plate, but I'll just be making sure that I'm doing it as a pair. Now, what I see, the simplest way to do it as a pair is, you'll see on one side of the plate, work B is written on one side, but once you pair that to the other plate, so that they're a, a matching pair, that O's nest is written on the other plate. So if you put all the components on the work B side of one, put it to the O's nest side of the other. So now that's the nut blocks in place on both outer Y plates. So next on, I'm going to concentrate and get the pieces for to do the inner Y plates. So here I have one of the inner Y plates. And as you can see, there's four holes along one edge and three holes along the other edge. Now the three on the, this edge are actually the bottom of the plate and they are bigger to accept the eccentric spacer. Now, if you can see, the eccentric spacer is done that it allows you, as you turn it, to adjust the spacing of the bolt through the plate. So in this case, we'll be using that later to adjust the tightness of the wheels on the extrusion. So the simplest way I can come up with of putting this together is to put four bolts through the plate first and then start from there building up all the components so I'm going to concentrate on the bottom first so I'm adding an eccentric spacer and I'm getting that to sit into the hole on each I'm then going to add a precision shim to each of those. Then I am popping on a wheel. Next, I am going to be using a nine millimeter aluminium spacer on both. Then two more wheels and two more shims and then I am adding two more of the eccentric spacers to go through the front plate and the front with the top one then I am going to be building up and instead of using the eccentric spacer I am just using an ordinary 6mm spacer Shame. Oh. A wheel. A wheel. A nine mil spacer again. 
another wheel <clears throat> shim on each and then two more just six mil spacers and that's the components built up on the back plate so now we just add the front plate to sit over the four bolts and that keeps everything nice and confined and it's just a case of lining up the eccentric spacers to come through the two bigger bottom holes then we add a shim to each of the bolts and then we just add a nylock nut to each of those like that then it's just a case of tightening those up. And with that one put together, I'm just going to do the other side now, which is going to be still again a mirror image of this one. Okay, now that I have both of those assembled, the next thing I need to do is go back to the eccentric spacers I put in the bottom. Now, there is a marking on those that says six millimeters. That's to be lined up to the bottom of the plate. So I just want to bring those around till they're all at the bottom. I know it's probably very hard to see it on the camera because it's hard to see it here as well. So I have those brought around now like the instruction says. That gives the maximum distance between both sets of wheels. And the next thing I need to do then is introduce some of the extrusion. This is the short piece that comes for the z-axis so you use that to set this up now as you can see hopefully there is movement in that as it is it'll rock and it'll move up and down so the idea is you tighten those a small bit at a time until you take the movement out of the rail you see you can still there's still some in it so I'll go a bit more now I'm going about equal amounts on all of them at the moment until I get close then I will just each side a shade if it needs to As you can see, there's still a small rock in it, but it's not as bad. And now I have got the movement out of it that way, but I need to make sure that it's still not too tight and that there's no lateral movement in it, which there's not. So... You want to make sure that all the rollers, top and bottom, are rolling. So I just lay my finger on them, and if I stop with my finger, it's not, as far as I'm concerned, tight enough. And 
and just check the upper ones as well. And all those are moving and I'm not stopping them by laying my finger on them. So that's how you adjust the wheels for the track. Like that. So I'll just pop ahead and I'll do that on the other one and then we'll come back and do the rest. So the last thing I have to do in this portion of the build is to add a drag chain mount. So that's pretty simple. It's just two bolts, a few washers and a couple of nuts. And that's the drag chain mount now installed. And I now have both of the Y plate assemblies completed. Okay, that's where I'm going to leave it for this video. Hopefully you're enjoying following along with the build as much as I am doing it. Next time I am going to be building the X carriage assembly. Uh, so if you don't want to miss out on anything, maybe you might consider subscribing and hitting the notification bell if you haven't already done so. So all that's left for me to say is thanks very much for watching and I'll see you again soon. Good luck.